Main man, main man here, back at it. Y'all know how I get down. We talking boxing. Look here, man. Want to take a second to kind of reflect on this year of boxing. 2015 is coming to a close. We are approaching a new year. Hopefully more bigger and better things for boxing in 2016. We got MMA right on our heels, ladies and gentlemen. We got MMA right there looking to take the mantle from boxing. We cannot exciting. There's a new era and a new generation of fighters that's starting to take over in the sport. There's a lot of good, 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 good storylines to follow. We will deal with those storylines and what to look forward to in this particular video. I am really looking forward to this upcoming year in boxing, ladies and gentlemen. MMA better watch they ass, man, because there's no fucking way that MMA is knocking boxing off that shining hill. Now, let's look into some of the upcoming storylines, if you will, for this upcoming year of 2016. Oh, and before I do so, I also want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all my supporters and fans of this channel that stood with me through this year, the previous year, and will be coming for the years ahead. I will remain here on YouTube and keep continuously bringing boxing, opinion, from the heart, from the real. You know what I mean? And I, I will keep remaining doing that. But everybody who's been rocking with me and you guys know who you are, I really appreciate it if I never told you that. Now, moving right along. 2016 storylines in boxing, man. Good, good ones we're following. Good ones that are, emer that are emerging right now, man. Let's start off with the very, very first one. The Now, some of the storylines you can follow starting with uh, this one in particular. I guess the first one we'll start off with is Keith Thurman versus Sean Porter. Both of these fighters are coming off phenomenal years, if you ask me. They both went undefeated this year. We got Sean Porter, man, gaining victories over Eric Bonet, as well as uh, Adrian Bronner. And then we got Keith Thurman beating Luis Colazzo and Robert Guerrero. And Keith Thurman winning PBC Fighter of the Year. Honors. Winning that as recently as last week, y'all. So now these are two fighters that we have been wanting to see in the ring together for quite some time. Uncle Al has teased us with it. He's waved it in our faces. He's developed these guys. They have became perennial stars in the welterweight division. Keith Thurman you know, looking at this story, Sean Porter is basically inviting this fight. Can't wait to get into this fight. Sean Porter's always had that attitude. He goes into fights with full heads of steam. And Keith Thurman ain't nowhere to be fucking found. Everybody's like, where the fuck is Keith Thurman? He ain't saying shit. This kind of reminds me of when Keith Thurman uh, was calling out supposedly Amir Khan at the time. And then all of this calling out Keith Thurman was doing, talking all this shit. And then when it seems as if the fight possibly was going to be made, this was right before Pacquiao and Mayweather, when it seems as if the fight was going to be made when Amir Khan and Keith Thurman was on the same show together, I think it was on Showtime, Keith Thurman was a fucking church mouse. He ain't talk that shit. He ain't talk that don't duck me son shit. We didn't hear that when Amir Khan was right there in front of Keith Thurman's face. So the question has to be asked. Keith Thurman talks a good fucking game, but where the fuck is he? Nurturing an injury? That shoulder injury he's been dealing with? That's fucking tendinitis? Is that where he is? But whatever the fact, this seems as if this fight is going to be going down in 2016. Um, from what I'm hearing, we, we originally thought it was going to go down in January to kick off the PBC on Fox Sports 1, but instead they're looking to put Danny Garcia versus Robert Guerrero there. So that's an upcoming fight that we are looking forward to sometime in 2016. No official date or month or venue has been given at this time to nobody, not even the Porter camp. So we'll be looking forward to that fight. Whenever that fight, if that fight goes down, what a fucking fight. What a fucking fight. Keith Thurman being a regular champion, whatever that means. And uh, Sean Porter coming off that big victory against Adrian Brown, in which he beat him very decisively. So good fight to look forward to. Okay, next fight. We got the number one newly crowned pound-for-pound -pound fighter in 
Roman Chocolito Gonzalez. Oh, should I say the newly crowned pound for pound fighter by HBO? Roman Chocolito Gonzalez, who's the current WBC 112 pound flyweight champion. He will possibly be facing this upcoming year in 2016 his number one rival, a rematch between uh, him and Juan Francisco Estrada. 33 and 2, 24 knockouts. Roman Gonzalez, 44 and 0, 38 knockouts. Now, what makes this fight so fucking intriguing is the fact that it's a rematch. And in the first fight, where they fought at a lower division at the 108-pound uh, division, which was junior flyweight. The first fight was a hell, I mean, to the end of the earth fight. It could have went either way. I mean, either way. Me personally, I did a video on that fight and I gave it to Estrada. A lot of people didn't agree. But it, it, if you if you gave it to Estrada, hey. If you gave it to Gonzalez, hey. But the fact still remains that these two have unfinished business. Since then, both fighters have still been very successful fighters. They both fight at the 112 pound division where we have Roman Gonzalez as the now WBC champion. And we have Juan Estrada as the WBO and the WBA champion. And it seems as if. Uh, uh, my guy Roman Gonzalez just fought Brian Valora, a guy who Juan Estrada defeated a little while back. And very easily, the same way Roman Gonzalez finished him very easily. So they've both beaten similar opponents. They fought each other to the end of the earth. Wasn't really a super clear winner, in my opinion, in that fight. So the buildup for a rematch is there. It's a unifying fight. This, is, as I said in that video, is the type of fight that Roman Gonzalez needs to solidify his place as pound for pound number one. I don't, fight fans don't agree that Roman Gonzalez is a number one pound for pound fighter. He's never unified. Okay? He's never unified or went after other championships. I said it in that video. But this will be the perfect opportunity for Gonzalez to get out there and show everybody why he's considered number one pound for pound. In 2016, that humongous fight, this rematch for all of the marbles, all of the belts, ladies and gentlemen, will be going down in 2016 from what we hear through reports. They are working on the details of this fight soon. This is a fight I cannot wait to see. I cannot wait to see it. I cannot wait to break it down. I can't wait for this fight, man. I'm trying to tell y'all something. Tune in. Gonzalez versus Estrada 2 is going to be the shiz snitch. Moving right along. We have the rematch of Tyson Fury versus Vladimir Klitschko. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight have brought so much relevancy to the heavyweight division. This was a fight in which we had a guy, big six foot fucking seven, whatever he is, a big guy come into the ring and do something we didn't think we, we, we can see. A man of his size, his girth, his length, using movement foot movement, constantly moving his body, side to side, head movement, good lateral movement. We seen Tyson's Fury style look much more superior and breathe fresh air into the heavyweight division by defeating Vladimir Klitschko. A loss, he, um, a man who hasn't suffered a loss in over nine and a half years. And he came in and, he, and Tyson Fury came in confident in Klitschko's backyard in front of a humongous crowd, in front of the world, because this is the heavyweight division, in front of the world, and dethroned Vladimir Klitschko. So Klitschko has decided to use his rematch clause abilities, in which a rematch is going down in 2016. And I'm pretty sure the winner of this fight 
will be looking to pivot themselves towards Deontay Wilder, who is the current American-born WBC heavyweight champion of the world. Now, that was set the stage. That one big fight will set the stage for another big fight. And we can't wait. Ladies and gentlemen, the eyes and ears that are going to be on this fight is going to be crazy. This is going to be a humongous fight in 2016. A rematch from two heavyweight giants. Giants. This will prove to see if Tyson Fury is a fluke or if he's the real fucking deal, man. Did he just get a lucky night? Did he just sway the judges enough? by? Because it wasn't that exciting of a fight. It wasn't a lot of fireworks in that fight. But he did enough to sway the judges. And I'm pretty sure the sway majority of fight fans. So a rematch between Klitschko and Fury, man. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be huge. Ukraine and UK going at it. Can't get much better than that. Tune in 2016 for that fight. Next fight that I can't wait to see. Next thing in boxing that I cannot wait to see. And I would like to bring it to everyone's attention. This is very important. This is very important fucking important regardless how you feel about this guy he is who he is he has done what he has done he calls himself tbe he labels his crew as tmt he sees himself as the greatest fighter of all time i'm talking about none other than five division champion floyd money mayweather This may be his last fight. The odds are extremely high. Anybody with half a brain ain't buying the 49 fight bullshit. We all know that Floyd is going to come back for that 50th fight to break Rocky Marciano's record. And what they've initiated in the welterweight and amongst other divisions is a tournament style where These guys will fight each other. The higher elite fighters will fight each other. Whoever becomes champions, Floyd gets to basically choose every anybody from 47 to 54 whom he wants to fight for that 50th fight. And he was going to go to the most profitable guy. No ifs, ands or buts. Not to mention on the back burner. I'm pretty sure his third eye is still watching Manny Pacquiao. I don't care what nobody says because that is still the most profitable fight on the planet for him. So I'm pretty sure Third Eye is watching exactly what Manny Pacquiao does. I'm pretty sure something deep inside of Floyd Mayweather is hoping that Manny Pacquiao looks impressive in his next fight so he can gin up enough support for a rematch and milk the public once again. But the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, this may be the last time we see this. This may be the last time. This may be the final curtain call for Floyd Mayweather. This may be the time where we see the artwork that Floyd brings into the ring for the final time. Some of you call it running. Some of you call it boxing. I call it art. And this is maybe the last time we see it. We need to really covet that moment, ladies and gentlemen. We need to really, really zoom in on that moment, the last time that this man may go 12 rounds in the sport of boxing before the new guard takes over. The the the, the true pound number one pound for pound fighter. The undefeated Floyd Mayweather's last 50th fight in 2016, y'all. How big is that going to be? How big? And you can't talk about Floyd Mayweather and not mention Manny Pacquiao. This perhaps may be Manny Pacquiao's last year of fighting. I don't know if it's going to be one or two fights. We all know that he's scheduled to fight in April. April 9th, I'm hearing, is the date. We all know that he's running for office in the Philippines after this particular fight in April. But I'm sure if he looks impressive, no matter whom the opponent is, at this time it's rumored to be several people. We hear Amir Khan, we hear Terrence Crawford, and we hear uh, uh, my man Bradley for a third time. Maybe even a Marquez 5. I don't know what fight presents itself. But the fact is, whatever that fight may be, is going to be a big fight. 
because Manny Pacquiao really wants to rematch Floyd Mayweather, whether it's for the reasons he think he can win or whether it's for monetary gain. I don't fucking know. But the fact is he wants to see Floyd. And the only way that he's going to see Floyd is he needs a big win. So we can count on Manny Pacquiao to take on a big fight. And if he wins that fight, especially in impressive fashion, that would be more than enough to gin up a rematch between him and Floyd. And then there may be two fights between the both of them. You see what I'm saying? So these are the things that you got to watch. Because if Floyd does decide to fight one of the champions, which I don't think he'll do both, but if he does fight one of the champions that emerges from these tournaments and he beats them, and Manny Pacquiao beats his next opponent, whomever that may be, especially if it's one of the names mentioned, a high caliber fighter. It's almost instantaneous. We'll get a Pacquiao Mayweather too. You heard it from me first. So those things are in play with these two boxers. They're going to be hanging it up this year, but they may see each other. And before they see each other can possibly give us a big fight beforehand. Things to look forward to in the sport of boxing in 2016 ladies and gentlemen next thing andre ward versus sergey kovalev andre ward is taking a lot of fucking heat this year none i guess no different than any other year which we've only seen him in the ring like what three times in like four years prior to this year so that ain't nothing new for andre ward he decided when he signed his deal with Rock Nation Sports Boxing this year, he decided him and Jay-Z must have sat down and said, hey, before I step foot back in the ring, with, I need to build a brand. Because Andre Ward has been fight, fighting courts, court cases. He's been trying to get out of his, his promotional contracts. He hasn't fought in major big venues. He's barely even fought out, outside of Oakland, California. So it seems as if to me, Andre Ward this year decided... I'm not only going to build my brand because we've seen him on all the talk shows and all the connections that Jay-Z has. We've seen him on BET. The fuck? You know what I mean? Through a connection I'm pretty sure Jay-Z has. We've seen him doing these things, fighting these bums on and getting himself out there. As well as acclimating himself to move up from 168, a division in which he dominated, to 175. In which he will meet Sergey Kovalev as in a promised fight. By HBO, a promised fight, not one that Andre Ward can back out of for whatever the fuck, but a promised fight between him and Sergey Kovalev in 2016. We know Sergey Kovalev is scheduled to fight Lucian Butte upcoming. I don't know if it's January or February, but it's, it's, that's going to be his next fight. And this is a rematch fight for Sergey Kovalev. Most expecting Sergey to get through easily, even though the first fight was a tough fight for him. And that was set the stage for an Andre Ward and Sergey Kovalev fight, a fight that we are clamoring for because people are now taking the pound for pound positions away from Andre Ward, saying he hasn't had a a, 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 a fight that no one can mention in the last few years. He hasn't had a, a, a relevant fight, if you will, in the last few years. So he needs this fight to get himself back on track. Though most boxers and fighters still see Andre Ward as number one pound for pound, fans are weary right now. And I'm tired of defending the dude, quite honestly. So he needs this fight. And this fight is promised. The contract has been signed. So ladies and gentlemen, we will be getting a Kovalev and Ward fight in 2016. That is going to be humongous. Regardless if you are a fan who sees Andre Ward as still number one pound for pound or number two or number three or whatever, he needs to prove it and he needs to do it now. He's not even in my top four, maybe even five right now, pound for pound. He's not there since he left the 168 pound division. He's just not there. He's done jack shit at 175. This is pound for pound and he's done nothing in the new division he fights in. So Andre Ward needs this fight. This fight is going to be explosive. This is a guy he's going up against who's killed the man in the ring. This is a man who punches like a mule kicks. This is a man who's been rumored to be juiced up because he's just devastating everyone with his power. Same as Gennady Golovkin. So this fight is seen as one of the major fights of 2016, ladies and gentlemen. 
I don't know who's going to win the match, to be honest with you. I'm not going to sit back right now and give a prediction or a strategy, but Ward better be on his shit, man. Well, I don't know if Ward can handle the power of a full-fledged 175 fighter. But it's good what Rock Nation is doing, getting him slowly but surely acclimated to 175. So we'll see how that plays out. But hell of a fight for 2016. Another storyline to follow. This year, well, we've seen, at the end of this year more so, uh, we've just seen former IBF 140-pound champion, Lamont Peterson move up from 140 to 147 in which two guys are there that are rival of his. One he beat on controversy and the other most fight fans feel he beat. And that's Danny Garcia and Amir Khan. They are right there in the same division. Now as Lamont Peterson, will he get redemption? Will Al Heyman be willing to take a risk again on those fights? Will he be risking to put Danny Garcia back in the ring with Lamont Peterson after what we saw? Will he be willing to give Amir Khan back to Lamont Peterson after what happened? We all know there should have been a rematch after that first fight. But, uh, you know, Lamont Peterson got banned after that. He got stripped of his titles and banned. He was robbed against Danny Garcia and... The thing was fucked up given that the fight was at a catch weight. Lamont Peterson was also taking uh, his strap was also taken away from him. I'm sorry, because he was also world champ. He was IBF 140 champ. He had that belt vacated or stripped of him because he fought at a catch weight. Different strokes for different folks, ladies and gentlemen. Some fighters do it, fight at catch weights, retain their belts. Eris Lindy Law is a prime example. Some fighters fight at catch weights and lose their belts. Lamont Peterson being a prime example. Chris Algieri being a prime example. And that's fucked up. And that's fucked up. But the fact is that dude needs redemption. And he can easily get redemption because in my opinion, he can beat these two fighters. He can beat these two fighters, ladies and gentlemen. Amir Khan's chin has not been tested. He's not been in there with the power puncher. Have you guys noticed that? Or am I the only one that noticed that? Everybody there putting Khan in there are pillow punches. The Colazzo fight. The Alexander fight. You know what I'm saying? The Algeri fight. These are not known knockout artists here. And these are the guys he's fought. So I say Lamont Peterson has a very legitimate chance given his style. Now, especially now, Whenever he feels as though he has the fight under his control, he fights extremely aggressive. Hands down, walking through shots, looking to exchange power shots. And I don't know if Amir Khan can handle that. We've seen what he did to Danny Garcia. It didn't look like Danny could handle it at a catch weight. Didn't look like it, ladies and gentlemen. So this thing can be big. Lamont Peterson can make a lot of noise at the welterweight division. And I'll be sitting back watching to see how Lamont Peterson's career plays out at welterweight. This is all coming in 2016. Next fight, Kell Brook versus Amir Khan. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness gracious. Now, I am so sick and talking talking about Amir Khan, but I will talk about that motherfucker. Let me tell you about this bitch. He runs around chasing Mayweather and Pacquiao. Refusing to fight the guy who knocked his ass out, who's ranked right under him, Danny Garcia. Refusing to take on a Garcia fight. So busy keeping his head in the clouds, fighting, trying to get Pacquiao or Mayweather. And in the meantime, between time, fighting nobody of relevancy. With the ex- But Devin was already a shell of himself by then. But the fact still remains, he's fought no one. He's done nothing at welterweight and he expects to get the two top stars at the welterweight division that makes zero sense to me but anyway he played us he played us he played us and he always kept the fight that we've been wanting to see the fight between him and Kell Brook a fight that was promised to Kell Brook he told Kell Brook if he beats somebody that's worth mentioning if he wins a world title then he'll fight him and Amir Khan has moved the goalpost several times on Kell Brook because Kell Brook did both of those things, and he's still no fight. But in 2016, in the summer, most are speculating that this fight will go down. 
We all know Kell Brook has been backing out of different fights, not trying to risk things. He backed out of the Chavez fight, a fight that we honestly wanted to see because Kell Brook needed to step his shit up too. He's been fighting nothing but bums since he won the fucking strap. Since he took that belt off Sean Porter, the man ain't fought nobody. And then when we finally get a guy who's not the guy, but he was a, we know he had to dig deep to beat this guy, he doesn't fight him. So evidently they're maneuvering around fights, giving different reasons, giving different bullshit to line up a fight amongst themselves. If they can't get the two top dogs, Pacquiao or Mayweather, then they'd rather fight each other. Because they know if they lose to either Pacquiao or Mayweather, that it's not really viewed as loss. You know what I'm saying? So they decided to keep each other waiting. And now the 147 pound IBF world champion in Kell Brook and Amir Khan will see each other in possibly 2016. And I think that's going to go down in the summer. They're talking Wembley, ladies and gentlemen. These are two UK fighters. They will put 80,000 asses in the seats of Wembley. This is going to be a humongous fight. Great for the sport of boxing. I mean, great for the sport of boxing. Can't wait to see it. Follow this story, folks. Stick with it. Stick with it. And the next major fight that I want to talk about for 2016 upcoming, follow this storyline and follow this storyline. Close fight fans. But I think possibly next to Pacquiao and Mayweather, the biggest fight of 2016, the number one, the big cheeseburger fight of 2016 would be Saul Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin. Ladies and gentlemen, what this fight will do for the sport of boxing, oh my God, this will officially usher in the new era right here. This is that fight. This is that fight that will usher in the new era. If Canelo Alvarez defeats Gennady Golovkin, if is the big word, ladies and gentlemen, so I don't want to hear nobody, oh, you say Canelo Alvarez is going to beat him. No. If Canelo Alvarez beats Gennady Golovkin, ladies and gentlemen, the earth is going to shake. It's going to fucking shake. When this fight gets announced, the sky is going to crack. I'm telling y'all, man. This is this is it. This fight, I'm telling you, is going to be so fucking big, man. We got a kid who just won 160 pound WBC title off Miguel Cotto at 155 pound catch weight. We've got a guy who's taking on all comers. I don't give a fuck what nobody out there says. All you Canelo haters say what the fuck you like. Look at his resume. He's taking on all comers. From each division. He's taken on the best. Of each division. That he's been in. Mayweather at 47. Laura at 54. And Kirkland. And now. Cotto. And Gennady Golovkin at 160. I mean come on. This kid is on the right path to greatness man. And I said it in a previous video. He will be right there beside his mentor, Oscar the Bitch. I'm sorry. Oscar De La Hoya. He will be right there beside him if he gets through Gennady Golovkin. Now, Gennady Golovkin has a lot to prove. Though he's done, he's won me over. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. He's won me over. He's won enough titles. He's knocked out enough motherfuckers. He's on a what? Uh, I don't know how many knockout streaks, 18 or some shit. How many title defenses? He's done it all. He's won me over. The David Lemieux fight, which was his last fight, in which the IBF 168-pound belt off David Lemieux, that fight was all I needed. I don't know what you motherfuckers need, but that was it for me. And now, everyone who's been avoiding this guy, for whatever reasons, don't give me no bullshit about politics. He doesn't align himself with top rank or Al Heyman. He's in the middle. No one has been able to fight this guy. No one of note. And now this is the fight that Kennedy Golovkin needs to solidify himself as the dude of boxing. Whoever beats Canelo, and take in mind, will be the guy because he's the interim guy, if you will, right now. I like to call Canelo the interim guy. Since Floyd left, Canelo is the interim guy. 
And whoever beats this dude, especially Gennady Golovkin, and he gets that WBC strap off Canelo, and then he will have every damn near major belt at 160. With the exception of the one that uh, Saunders just just won. With the exception of that. Oh, my God. And that will set the stage for that fight, of course. And Kennedy can go and get that belt, too, if they can make it. Oh, man. This fight is for everything at 160, y'all. Huge fight. The pay-per-view numbers are going to go skyrocketing. Don't know if they're going to top me with a Pacquiao at 4.4 million. But they're going to be in that ballpark. We're looking at at least two. Two to three million. And I'm guesstimating that right now. Two to three million for Canelo Cotto. View, pay-per-view buys. That's going to be big. And there ain't nothing in MMA touching that. Nothing. I don't give a fuck. This will possibly be the last year in which we see Bernard Hopkins grace the ring. 51 years old, ladies and gentlemen. 51. He's saying he'll be willing to take fights from 175 to 168. I'd love to see B-Hop get in there for his final fight with the, the Gale or or maybe even a Badu Jack. I don't know. That'll be good fights for him. I don't know. Maybe he'll take a lesser opponent at 75. I don't know. I know he damn sure ain't taking the winner of Kovalev and Ward. That I do know. And that would be foolish to do it. But the fact is, for all of us out there who wonder why is Bernard Hopkins still fighting, we've seen what happened with Roy Jones a couple weeks ago. We don't want to see that happen to Bernard Hopkins. You got to say Bernard Hopkins is a fucking alien. Roy Jones ain't Bernard Hopkins. You look at Bernard Hopkins' physique and you look at Roy Jones. James Tony ain't Bernard Hopkins. No one fights the style or has the boxing mind of a Bernard Hopkins. He knows not to get himself hurt. He knows his vulnerabilities. He's a guy who's in control of himself. Usually in most cases like this, would I want to see a legend go out like this? Fuck no. But in Bernard Hopkins' case, in the style that he employs, in the style that he uses, his boxing mind, I don't mind. I hope he doesn't take too much damage, but I can understand he's a warrior and he wants to go out like such. This is a man who had over 20 title defenses, ladies and gentlemen. This is a man who's held every major belt, who was in the Hall of Fame. No ifs, ands or buts as even going down as possibly the greatest middleweight ever. And this will be the last time we will see him grace the ring. Respect that. Respect that. Follow that for 2016. And last but not least, because this video is too damn long, and I'm pretty sure I might have left one or two of them out, call Frampton and Scott Quigg for the a, a, the third time. A unifying match, if you will. That's going to be huge for UK. That's going to be huge for the entire sport of boxing. So there you have it. Follow all those fights, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pretty sure there's more I'm maybe leaving out, but those are the biggest that are upcoming on 2016. I'm looking forward to every single one, every single fucking one. I will be here. Strategy breakdowns, post fighting, uh, uh, post fight, you know, reviews. We will be getting all into it. I will be back in front of the camera for 2016. So folks, stick with me. But for those, I made this video long on purpose, and I just want to say, stick with the sport of boxing. I ain't got nothing against MMA, but MMA ain't boxing. Let's keep boxing as number one. And to the next video, Main Man, Made Man, don't forget to subscribe, Twitter, Made Man 511, Facebook, Main Man, Made Man Boxing Forum. And with these fights and everything that I've said in this video being said, I want to say Happy New Year's to everybody out there. Please be safe. I want to have you back here on YouTube to listen to your boy. Be safe. Okay. Happy New Year's. Don't do it too much. And, and, and just, yeah, I'll catch y'all then. All right. To the next video. Peace out. See y'all next year.